Hello friends. Welcome to this video session of Lumped Heat System Analysis Part 1. My name is Mr. S. V. Kumbar, Assistant Professor, Sharad Institute of Technology College of Engineering, Hedra, Ichal Kanji. This Lumped System Analysis is also known as Transient Heat Condition. So what is transient heat condition before going to start actual lumped heat system? This is the outline of today's video lecture. First, lumped system analysis and criteria for lumped system analysis. And second, Biot and Fourier number, introduction to Biot and Fourier number. So we will start with transient heat condition, conduction. So up to previous lecture, there was a steady state means temperature was considered as steady it will not be changed with respect to time but in real practice temperature temperature vary from time to time so mathematically we can write temperature t as a function of x y z these are the coordinate axis and time interval t where t represents time coordinate in transient conduction, temperature depends not only on position in the solid but also time. Up till now, we have considered only position in the solid, position system XYZ, but temperature also dependent on time. We will see few examples based on this transient conduction. First one heat exchanger. Heating and cooling of fluid is dependent on time means as the time increases or decreases it cool or heats depending upon time interval boiler tubes again as soon as boiler is started steam is not produced instantly it takes some time right so boiler tube is again one of the one of the example of lumped heat system or transient heat conduction cooling of ic engine cylinder heads after a long journey internal combustion engine gets heated so cooling of ic engine require some time so it can be considered as transient heat conduction example few more example heat treatment of engineering components and quenching of ingots you might have learned heat treatment processes in metallurgy subject in that heating and cooling of engineering components for example crankshaft then piston then connecting rod here heating and cooling requires some time also for quenching of ingots again it is time dependent heating of electric ions if you if you know how to do iron then heating of electric ion requires some time to heat that coil heating and cooling of building that is the best example of transient heat conduction heating as well as cooling of building it takes time freezing of foods if you keep any food inside refrigerator it will not be cooled in quick time so it takes some time again it is the best example of transient heat conduction uh, we will see lumped system analysis that is Newtonian heating or cooling. In lumped system analysis, the internal conduction resistance of the body to heat flow is negligible as compared to the convective resistance at the surface. It means that internal conductive resistance of the body that is L upon Ka is negligible as compared to convective resistance that is 1 upon Ha at the surface. So, the temperature of the body varies with time, but at any given instant, the temperature within the body is uniform and is independent of position. That is, temperature T is a function of time only. So, practical examples in such cases are heat treatment of small metal pieces that we had already discussed, measurement of temperature with a thermocouple or a thermometer where the internal resistance of the object for heat conduction may be considered as negligible. So, 
in analysis consider a solid body this is the solid body here to start with time interval t t is equal to 0 let the temperature of this body solid body throughout its body be uniform temperature at t is equal to ti initial temperature at the instant t is equal to 0 let the body be suddenly placed in a medium at a temperature ta as shown in figure that is quenched air quenched or liquid quenched now writing an energy balance equation for this situation the amount of heat transfer into the body in time interval dt is equal to increase in internal energy of the body in time interval dt so it can be written as h a t a t is a function of tau d tau is equal to m c p d t which is equal to rho c p v into d t as m is replaced by density into volume now since t a is a constant so d t is equal to d of t of tau minus t of a so rewriting this equation derivative of t of tau minus t of a upon t of tau minus t of a which is equal to minus h a rho c p v into d tau integrating this between time interval t is equal to 0 that is t is equal to t y at any temperature t is equal to t then we will get final expression as t of tau minus t of a upon t i minus t a which is equal to exponential of minus h a tau upon rho c p v so this equation is very very important where rho c p v upon h a is known as thermal time constant and has unit of time right so consider a general system for unsteady state heat conduction in unsteady state heat conduction time is dependent temperature is dependent on time so here in in figure a there is a negligible internal thermal resistance so e out is equal to q convection so this equation can be written as q is equal to m c p d t upon d tau is equal to h a t minus t a and m is replaced by rho v so negative sign indicates that the amount of heat is convected that's why the heat is rejected e out that's why negative sign is taken so where rho is density of solid this solid v is volume c is specific heat of body h is it's a unit of surface conductance t is equal to temperature of the body at any time interval tau a s is the surface area and t a is the ambient temperature so as i told you integrating this equation we will get dt upon t minus t a which is equal to h a s upon rho v c integration of d tau just this is the simplification of this just rewriting this and integrate this equation we will get integration of t t upon t minus t a its integration is nothing but log to the base e t minus t a that is ln t minus t a which is equal to minus h a s rho v c integration of d tau is nothing but tau plus c1 c1 is nothing but it's a constant of integration now the boundary conditions are at time interval t is equal to 0 the temperature t is equal to initial temperature so substitute as there is a only one constant of integration we will require only one boundary condition put t is equal to 0 here then t is equal to ti so if you put t is equal to 0 this term will become 0 and ln ti minus ta so c1 constant of integration is equal to ln ti minus ta substitute this c1 here we will get ln t minus ta as it is which is equal to minus h a s upon rho v c tau plus substitute constant of integration ln ti minus ta take this term to left hand side it will become ln t minus ta upon ti minus ta which is equal to theta upon theta i which is equal to exponential of 
minus h a s rho v c tau. So this equation is very very important in lumped analysis system, right? So remember this is this equation as t minus t a upon t i minus t a, where t is the temperature of system at any time interval t. T a is the ambient temperature and t i is the initial temperature. H is the convective heat transfer coefficient. A s is the surface area. Rho is the density of that material. V is the volume of that material, and C is specific heat of that particular material which is used. So we will require this formula while solving numerical. Now, this is this graph shows exponential cooling and exponential heating. This is also known as Newtonian heating or Newtonian cooling. So in case of transient temperature response during time interval tau. Here we will get theta upon theta naught as tau T H one upon H A S into rho V C. That is thermal conductive resistance at a time interval. That is lumped thermal capacitance of solid. Right? The quantity rho V C upon H A S has the dimension of time and it is called as thermal constant and denoted by tau T H. its value is indicative of rate of response of a system to a sudden change in its environmental temperature that is how fast a body will respond to a change in environmental temperature so tau th which is equal to 1 upon has rho v rho v c that is rth into cth convective thermal resistance into this cth where cth is known as lumped thermal capacitance of solid right so this figure 4.3 this figure 4.3 here it shows any increase in rth or cth will cause a solid respond more slowly to changes in its thermal environmental and will increase the time required to attain the thermal equilibrium okay and q is equal to rho v c t that is cth into t this is known as thermal equation and s is equal to ca it is related to electrical equation where s is capacitor c is capacitance of condenser e is the voltage when the switch is closed the solid is charged to temperature theta on opening the switch the thermal energy stored as cth is dissipated through thermal resistance rth convective thermal resistance is equal to 1 upon has and the temperature of the body decays with time so criteria for lumped system analysis for that purpose we must study biot number and fourier number we will see introduction of biot number and fourier number in this video lecture detail biot number and fourier number will be explained in the next video lecture so how to draw how to get biot number and fourier number and with the help of this how to draw heisler chart and grober chart we will study in the next video lecture so before that let the surface on left side of slab be maintained at temperature t1 and right hand side is temperature is t2 as a result of heat being lost to fluid at a temperature ta the flowing with a heat transfer coefficient ha now whatever amount of heat which is conducted is convected to atmosphere so it can be written as ka that is fourier's law which is equal to newton's law of cooling ka t1 minus t2 upon l l is the width of that slab which is equal to ha t2 minus ta now rearranging this equation we can write t1 minus t2 upon t2 minus ta which is equal to l upon ka upon 1 upon ha which is equal to thermal conductive resistance upon thermal convective resistance if you if you solve this you will get hl upon k which is known as biot number so the term hl upon k appearing on rhs is dimensionless number which is known as biot number so that wall is shown here let's say t1 
and T2 these are the temperature, Ta is the ambient temperature and heat is flowing from left hand side to right hand side. Now there are three different cases when biot number is greater than 1, when biot number is equal to 1 and when biot number is less than 1. So this lumped heat analysis system is used when biot number is less than 1. So from the temperature profile for biot number is less than 1, it suggests that one can assume a uniform temperature distribution within a solid if biot number is less than 1. Now situation during transient conduction is shown in below figure. It may be observed that temperature distribution is a strong function of biot number. Right? So biot number is a function of temperature. For biot number is less than 1, temperature gradient in the solid is small and temperature can be taken as a function of time only. And also note that for biot number is greater than 1, temperature drop across the solid much larger than that across the convective layer of at the surface. Now biot number is given by the formula H into Lc upon K where H is convective heat transfer coefficient. Lc is known as characteristic length and K is thermal conductivity. Now you might be wondered Lc is taken here up till now we haven't specified related to Lc. Lc is known as characteristic length of solid and that characteristic length of solid can be calculated by this formula volume upon surface area right so if you know volume of any body it may be rectangular it may be circular it may be spherical in shape if you know surface area then you can easily calculate characteristic length for any shape here some common shapes are given that is plane wall of thickness 2l Lc is equal to L. For a long cylinder, characteristic length, volume upon area, its volume is pi r square L upon area, surface area is 2 pi r into L, so it will be r by 2. Similarly, for spherical of radius r, Lc is equal to r by 3. And for cube of side L, it will be L by 6. So, this is all about for Lumped heat system analysis part 1. In the next part, we will learn how to what is the significance of Biot number, Fourier number, numerical based on this Hessler and Grober chart in the next video lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much.